Hey peeps, what's going on? It's Josh, and I know I just made a note from the universe and that's posted, but, um, I don't know, I don't know why, but there's a lot of people that will watch a YouTube video with someone talking at them for however many minutes of their day, but they won't read an article on the internet. And, um, on tut.com, uh, one of the contributors on November 25th, and I'm going to link it in my pants, but uh, Kyla Sokol Ward, Ward um, she wrote a really interesting article, and I want you guys to know about this. So if you don't want to sit and watch me talk at you for 20 minutes, because I'm going to read it to you, and if you don't want that, then I suggest you go to the link in my pants and read it yourself. Because I don't care if you watch this video or not, but I want you to, I want you to know about this because this was something that changed the way that I think quite a bit about meditation. And I'm still absorbing it, but it's interesting, so I want to make a video about it. Uh, okay. So, Kyla wrote, I've been meditating on a daily basis for about seven months now. It has revolutionized the way I function, truly. I've learned some extremely powerful lessons from my meditations that I utilize anytime I'm feeling anxious. Here are just some of the amazing things I now do daily with meditation. Connect to my breath. Shift my thoughts from ego-based to love-based. Identify the location and color of any difficult emotions. Visualize my chakras glowing with rainbow lights. Send powerful energy to loved ones who have reported to me that they felt differently that day. Sounds pretty sweet, huh? Let me tell you, it is. So why aren't more people doing it? We're always reading about the scientific benefits of meditation, such as decreases in depression, better sex lives, and lengthening our telomeres a.k.a. slowing the rate of cellular aging and therefore living longer. So cool. But most people just can't get on board with it. Here are some of the most common reasons people don't want to try meditation. I just can't sit for that long. I hear you. Sitting still for a long time can be uncomfortable. But guess what? You don't have to sit with your feet crisscrossed in some strange uncomfy manner. You can lie down. You can use pillows. You can stand on your head. You can meditate to f for 5 minutes or 30. Meditation has flexibility and you're allowed to do whatever it is that is most comfortable for you. What we need to be focusing on is the mind. And if that's what's so hard for you, keep reading. Number two, I can't stop thinking. There are different types of meditation, some of which attempt to clear the mind of its noise. Others, and what I most enjoy practicing, involve simply noticing your thoughts and then letting them go. Instead of dwelling on your ego's reminder that you have over a hundred million things to get done today, let that thought enter your mind and then let it go without judging it. This means not analyzing your to-do list, not judging yourself for being lazy and having so much to get done and not being mad that you can't get your brain to shut the fuck up. Only she typed STFU. It just means allowing your thoughts to come and go without all of the subtext. Number three, I don't want to be left alone with my thoughts. Oh, this one. This one. I could talk about this one all day. Most of us are afraid that if we are left alone with our thoughts, we will drown. I literally said that in the last vlog. I did. We are afraid that if there is too much... Mm. We are afraid that there is too much hurt, worry, and fear going on in our brains for us to survive after paying attention to it. Let's be clear on one thing. The brain seems like a terrifying place to be alone with our thoughts. Seriously. Someone should have scripted a horror movie about this by now. And one more thing. Notice how I use the word seem, as in it appears to be scary, 
But once you're actually in there, you may just notice that it's not such a bad place after all. Our thoughts want to be noticed. When we avoid them, they grow until they become unavoidable and so much more difficult to deal with. Next time you're resisting a difficult emotion, try this practice. Get comfy and closing. <laughs> closing? Nope. That's not what she wrote. Get comfy and close your eyes. Deepen your breathing. Identify your feeling in the following ways. What emotion do you sense? Where do you feel it in your body? What color is it? What shape is it? This exercise helps you to do a couple of things. First, it helps you to experience an emotion without judging it. I know it's itchy. Secondly, it helps to separate you from your emotions. Why do this? Because sometimes when we resist our feelings, they overwhelm us to the point where we feel like we are the emotion. This isn't the case. I am not sadness. I feel sadness in my heart. It is a dark gray color and shaped like a pile of dust. See what I did there? Suddenly, I am no longer embodying the emotion of sadness, but rather, I am observing its form in my body, never saying whether it's good or bad. When we focus on observing, not reacting to our thoughts, we fall into ourself. Try to be with your thoughts every now and again. They're only powerful enough to take you down if you let them. Holy crap! And this isn't just a girl that's writing whatever. She's like a certified in integrative nutrition health coach who teaches women how to let go of dogmatic food rules and live more authentic lives without the chains of diets and poor body image. Um, she's had eating disorders herself. She's had uh, confidence issues and... So she's not just random whatever. And um, so yeah. Guys, I wanted you to experience this. And I mean no copyright infringement. Although, I don't know. I guess somebody could flag this. But that's not really the point. Um, the point is, a lot of times we don't take the time to read stuff like this. And to really observe and react to it. Um how important it is to understand well number one I'm a Virgo male so I have rules about ev excuse me about everything I have rules about how the toilet paper has to go on the roll up so that you pull it and it comes down not under it's I don't even know why I literally don't even know why that's just one of the rules um and rules are stupid. Rules are made to be broken in many instances because um, I know that I have a tendency to lean towards trying to control things and make things right and, and all of that. So that I know that I need to sometimes break my rules. So like for me, meditation, I always tried to do the cross-legged thing and I would like sit and try and not think and... The whole time I was focusing on not thinking, all I was doing was thinking because I was so focused on not thinking that all I could do was think because it was like, don't scratch your nose and then your nose gets itchy, right? So I love that the rules are gone uh, because lying down, laying down, damn it. Yeah, I always have a trouble with that. I always have a trouble. A trouble, indeed. I always have trouble with that one. Um, but actually leaning back in a chair like this, where my legs are hanging, and I'm just kind of like, I don't even know if you can see me actually, but like, actually I would probably be more likely to do it in a chair. Because, yes. And here's another thing. Um... I was just talking about drowning in your thoughts um, because there's so much. Our, our minds are so deep and anything scary for me gets compared to water because I don't know how to move in water. I don't know how to swim. I don't know how to keep myself alive. And sometimes 
being in my head can feel like drowning, but it's not like I lose oxygen. Like, I'm not actually dying. I'm just, I can't get a direction because I don't know how to move through that space. Because I'm so busy judging what I'm feeling. Why am I feeling this? Why am I such a pussy? What? How dare I be weak? You can never be weak. You have to be strong. Man up. All of these negative things that I say to myself r surrounding my feelings. Anytime I feel scared or there's, 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 with fear comes shame for me. I don't know if you guys experience this, but maybe you do. Maybe you judge your feelings too. And it's really not good because fear isn't something to be ashamed of. Fear is something that tells you something. Something that tells you something. Good one. Right? Yeah, thanks. I try. Um, fear is a notifier. Hey, something's going on in you. You feel afraid or you feel anxious. Something's going on with you. Why do I feel this way? Or not even, maybe not even why. But like, when I go down um, to like, what she says to think about, like, about your emotion. Like, last night, I was feeling so anxious. And for me, a lot of times, um, hugging something will help lessen my anxiety. So I grabbed the teddy bear that Maggie gave me, and I was just hugging it. And I buried my nose in it, and it kind of still smelled like her a little. And soft, and just... And I breathed. I was just breathing. And just... And then Katie was on the couch, because she stayed over, and she was like, what would the universe say? And I was like, I don't even know, because I feel like I'm being such an idiot by being stressed about something that shouldn't really be a big deal. But... It makes sense, actually, that I'm anxious right now because there's a lot going on. And that's okay. What's not okay is to drown myself in my anxiety to the point where I'm immobilized. And that's something that I think this article taught me. Or maybe reminded me. Or maybe taught me that I remembered it. Or reminded me that... Whatever. It... It's true. And I don't know that... For me, my anxiety, it usually feels like a cloud. Anxiety for me feels like a cloud. And it would kind of be like, kind of like red. If I had to associate a color with it, if I had to go with like what I was feeling. And for me, anxiety is like here and up into here. And it's like, Sometimes you can't catch your breath. I don't have panic attacks, although I'm realizing as I'm saying that maybe a couple of times in my history I have, but I was so busy, like, don't be such a little bitch. You're not allowed to freak out like this. Maybe I have had them in my past, but I don't currently. Because I've grown a little, maybe, and I, instead of, Instead of panicking because I feel anxiety, it's more like, oh, I feel so anxious. Fuck, what am I going to do? And then I find something to do. I'll either start cleaning to, like, avoid the emotion. But I haven't really been embracing it because I'm so busy saying, this is stupid. You're an idiot. Don't be anxious. You're being stupid, Josh. What an idiot. Like, these mean things that I say to myself because I'm feeling an emotion that... I'm feeling, and I welcome emotions of love, I, and, and they, they're often surrounded by how I look to others. If somebody's witnessing my anxiety, I will oftentimes get angry at myself for appearing weak in front of them, because weakness isn't safe, and I don't want to be unsafe in front of people, but... I don't really, if I'm, if I'm honestly thinking about it, with my logical mind coming from a place where I'm not anxious right now, anxiety is just an emotion. Am I really any weaker because I'm anxious? Or am I maybe just a little bit more jittery and 
maybe if I just acknowledge that I'm anxious, why am I anxious? Okay, because the inspection. Okay, why am I anxious? Because of the inspection. Because I'm not doing anything wrong. Okay. I guess I can just breathe. And not judge myself for feeling this way. And let it be okay that I'm nervous. And I don't know if this would have worked last night because I didn't think of it. I just hugged my teddy bear and breathed into the thing and Maggie got on Skype and then everything magically got a lot better. <laughs> a lot better? Yeah. So, um, and Katie was, uh, I was laughing with Katie about laser tag and how my laser tag name was Uranus and how messed up that is because I was the birthday boy. How are you going to make me be Uranus on the birthday boys? It's my birthday. How dare you? And I was last because I wouldn't shoot anyone, I guess, because I was being a gentleman. Although I thought I was shooting people plenty. <laughs> and we started laughing and there are different ways to cope. So the way that I coped wasn't wrong. But I was anxious for a lot longer than I think I needed to be because I was being so mean to myself. And that was making me more anxious because there was no soft place to land. Sorry, my nose is so itchy, guys. Ugh. Stop. Okay. So. I, I don't know. Um. Maybe it is a thing where you can master an emotion by accepting its presence and just saying, I have the right to feel how I feel. How I feel is okay. How I feel is not wrong. It doesn't make me weak. Um, it just is. And then I'm not judging it. I'm... I'm kind of a little distant from it, so it's not like I am all of the anxiety right now, and I'm just, like, if you could see me sometimes when I clean because I'm anxious, I literally, like, Tasmanian devil style, and, like, if things get clean, that's great, but it could be a lot better. I could have more fun with it if I weren't just trying to drain the energy instead of confronting the emotion and saying yo you're hella anxious right now it's okay you can feel that that's cool be that don't be that but feel how you feel and then maybe it doesn't have so much power over you because you feel how you feel and you're not treating yourself like crap because you feel how you feel I don't know if this made any sense but I know next time I'm feeling a strong emotion, I'm going to try. I'm going to try really hard instead of beating myself up because I feel like I am that emotion or I associate that emotion with weakness or I associate whatever. Um, maybe, maybe this can help. I feel like it can. I feel like it can. So much to the point where I, like, wish I could print this. I don't have a printer, but I wish I could print this so that I could, like, put it up on my vision board because, like, this is amazing. And it's such a... I love how she presented it. Um, it's just a really good article. Really good. So. Let me know in the comments, if you would, for this video. I don't often ask for comments, but please... If you watch this and if you made it all the way through, please leave a comment and let me know what you think. And if any of this makes sense to you or if you do any of the things that I do, um, this is particularly something that I would be really curious to hear your thoughts on. So, yeah, it would make my, uh, my heart really happy if you left some comments and let me know what you guys are thinking as well. And that is all I have for you. Sorry this was so long, but... I, want, I wanted you guys to get this message, and then I wanted to talk about it a little bit. So I hope it was an enjoyable video for you, and I hope it made you think. And I hope that um, I hope that I start meditating like this. This sounds pretty amazing. We'll give it a try. Much love. Peep out.